Hey guys, my name is Priscilla Elias, I'm a professional photographer living in Stockholm and even though I do not exclusively shoot products, product photography is one of my passions. Product photography allows me to do some of the things I cannot do in other types of photography I shoot. With not much, I can work from home and at my own pace, while usually when we photograph people, shooting from home is less likely and you usually need to follow a time schedule for your shoot or event. Of course, that even as a product photographer working from home, you might want to follow a time schedule, otherwise you might end up not being productive. But when you have that in mind, you get to be more flexible. Today I'll tell you what is the product photography gear you need to start in product photography and all I use nowadays to do my product photos. <laughs> Before we get into the gear itself, it is important to mention that just as it works with any type of photography, you can have all types of budgets for product shots and the more money you put into it, the more flexible you are to work with different scenarios and products. What we're talking about today though is what you need in order to start making some good product shots to spice up your portfolio and get your first paid clients. The first thing you need to start in product photography is obviously a camera. And there's no such thing as the best camera for product photography. From entry-level cameras to professional ones, you will find many very good options that will fit you perfectly as a product photographer. I started out with a Canon 80D, which is a very decent camera to start out with. And now I'm working with a Canon 5D Mark IV, which is the camera I'm using to film this video. You might also want to take a look at Canon's M50 or the SL3 as entry cameras. And if you're up to invest some more money on it, you can go for even better models such as the Canon R5 or the R6. I'm only mentioning Canon here because I'm a Canon shooter, but if you want to make a research on other brands, they all have equivalent models that are just as good as the Canon. It's a matter of preference and I'm really happy with Canon. The two things you might want to consider when choosing the lens you should get in order to do product photography is what type of product you will shoot and where you will shoot it. The size of the product versus the size of the room or studio you have will definitely influence the decision of the best lens for you. There's one lens that I absolutely love for product photography and that I use most often, which is the 100mm 2.8 macro. But it might not be the best lens for you to start out with. The fact it is a fixed 100mm lens makes it a pretty tight lens and depending on the size of the room you have or on how big are the products you will shoot, this focal distance might not work for you. Plus, if you're shooting with a crop sensor camera, this lens becomes a 160mm lens on your camera. For that reason, if you want to start out with one specific lens, have in mind the place and the size of the products you will shoot first. And then, in order for you to choose the lens that best works for you, I will leave a link for a video I mentioned all the best product photography lenses for each specific case up here and in the description also, so you can go through it after you watch this video. A tripod is one of the most important things you will need as a product photographer. It will allow you to work with lower shutter speeds, still maintaining your photos very steady and sharp. If you're starting out, you might not want to buy the most expensive tripod and I myself don't have a very expensive one. I use a G-Koto, which I consider very decent for the money. You will find it for around $70 to $80 on Amazon and it should do the job for you, as it has been doing for me. Of course, if you want and you can invest in a more expensive one, you will find high-end Manfrotto tripods from $190 to $400 on Amazon. Well, you will actually find tripods for $2,500. Either way, I will leave a link for all the gear I'm mentioning here today in the description in case you want to take a further look into each one of them. If you want to be serious with product photography, you should consider investing in some light. And here you will find hundreds of different options and just as the camera, in the end, it's all about personal preference. 
but I will share what I think is essential and that was a good start for me. First, know that if you do not want to invest in light at all, but if you have a well-lit room, you might be able to take some good product photos only with natural light coming from a window. But if you do that, you might not be able to be consistent or very versatile with your images. So for example, if you have four products you need to shoot for a brand and you will use natural light, you might have a hard time making the photos look consistent in the end, since the light you will have at 10 a.m., for example, will not be the same light you will have at 12 a.m. and will not be the same light you will have at 2 p.m. and so on. For that reason, unless you're working in a unique image that will not take me much time to prepare, I always prefer using artificial lights. It gives me full control of my shots from the beginning to the end of a session. The light I use for my product photos is the same one I use for my portraits nowadays and it works just fine. It is the Godox SL60W and I use it with the newer 120cm Octobox as a diffuser to get soft and more natural looking light. Besides that, I often use a very cheap and practical light, the Aperture Amaran RGBWW LED light, to give me extra rim light or to light in specific areas of the product when I need some extra light. You can also go with speed lights if you want to be even more flexible and if you want to be able to take your lights anywhere with you. I myself have a Canon 600EX2RT and a Yongnuo EX-RT2 and every now and then I use them for my product shots, especially when I want or need to shoot somewhere outside my office slash studio slash house and if you go with a speed light you might want to work with an umbrella instead of the Octobox. It will also be more versatile and easy to carry around. This is a cheap item that can make all the difference. Having a diffuser will allow you to be more versatile and to bounce the light from your main source of light to the areas you need extra natural looking light. Backdrops are everything. If you're only shooting white or black backdrops and you have a white or a black wall you can use, perfect. But if you want to be versatile, having a couple of different backdrops can be a game changer. They're usually not very expensive and can make the whole difference in your shots. I hung a backdrop support on one of my walls in my office and whenever I need to shoot products, I can just bring it down to the floor and if I want the endless backdrop type of look, then I can just drop it over my table and shoot the products over there. I love deep back... Deep, I love deep backdrops. <sighs> Deep backdrops. I love deep back. I love deep backdrops. Deep back. Deep backdrops. It's always so hard to say this. I love deep backdrops. Backdrops. I love deep backdrops. Backdrops as they're made of muslin. That is a type of light fabric. They're foldable. They're lightweighted. They're washable, and it's pretty easy to get rid of the creasing. With deep backdrop, you can also customize the size of your backdrop, which to me it was essential since the support I have in my wall is not adjustable and I have a very specific size for it. Another option is to have a couple of table backdrops. I really like these backdrops, especially for food photography. Food photography. Uh, well, you can choose how they will look. And I really like them, especially for food photography, since if it gets dirty or wet, I can just use a damp cloth to clean them up. So I just tape them to my table and they're ready to go. As you see, a good background makes the whole difference in a photo and can be all you need to bring your product photo to another level. As I said in the beginning, a white wall might be all you need to start out in case you do not want to invest in any backdrops but then you might just need to have some Photoshop skills in order to improve the image and to be able to get rid of any imperfections or lines that separate the floor from the wall. It will be more post-production work, so for that reason I consider having one or two backdrops a very good option. And you do not need to hang them to your wall if you do not want to. You can just buy a portable and adjustable backdrop support system and just have it mounted to your room also. It's a cheap and practical way to start out. 
Before I tell you the last thing you might need to start in product photography, if this video helps you, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button. You will help me a whole lot in return and I will be super thankful. The last thing you might need to start as a product photographer are some props. And this will depend a lot on the type of shoot you will do. If you shoot the Amazon kind of shoot, you might not need any props. But if you will shoot stylized shots, you might want to have a couple of items that can help you to compose beautiful photos that will help to tell a story with your shots. And that is all. In short terms, if you have a small room, one specific backdrop, a decent camera, one decent lens that works specifically for the type of product you will shoot, a tripod, two sources of light, a diffuser and maybe some props, you're good to start. You will have all you need in hand to start and make some very decent product photos from your home or from your small studio. Besides that, what I suggest you do is work on your editing skills. This will be a big part of the process also, especially when you start out and you might not have all the equipment you need in hand. As I said, if you do not have a backdrop, you can deal with it, but you will have more work in post. Or maybe you don't have the light, it's okay, you can start without it, but you might need to deal with the lack of consistency on the shots and so on. For that reason, I really suggest that, if possible, you start out with this basic photography gear. It will allow you to be consistent and to make very decent images to create your portfolio and to sell your first photos. Again, the links for all the products I mentioned here will be in the description of this video in case you want to check them out. I hope this video helped you guys. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is there something else you consider important that you think I should have mentioned in this video? Or is there something I talked about that you do not consider important? If you're just starting out and you tried out this setup, please let me know how it works for you. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching this. I will see you in the next video. Ciao!